this press conference won't be the hour and a half yesterday's was, but it's got workouts here in a little bit. But um, thanks for coming in here. And before I give it to James here, then we'll go from there. I just want to make a couple points about what James has done. And obviously, those of you that have followed us for some time know we've been, he's been a priority of the program since he was in the eighth grade and uh, offered him a scholarship early and four years later after a tremendous career in this state, one of the best careers uh, ever in this state. Um, uh, he chose to come to Indiana and he did some outstanding things this year and thrust into not only the lineup, uh, which he earned his way into, but thrust very importantly and, and, and probably even more dramatically into a spotlight because of what we needed on our team and, and what we needed to, to be able to accomplish and what we needed on the offensive end, what we needed him to do on the defensive end, all those different things. And the one thing about James, and this is a, this is a, it's a small group. You wish that it was, a, you wish that every player got it like this. And, 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 and a lot of them get it at different times in their careers. But when you come in uh, with your number one focus being improvement, and not just talking about it, hoping about it, uh, or hoping for it, um, you know, pontificating about it, but actually going in there and doing something about it, that's exactly what he's done. Yeah, that's exactly what he's done since he walked in here. Robert Johnson was the same way. It, it was just like what Victor Aladipo and Will Sheehy did when they came in. And a lot of people like to work, you know, some other people like to play, but when you love to work on your game and you love to play, and then you can, then you can carry yourself with the humility, even at a young age like he is, of how important it is to get better. And he got coached as hard and tough as anybody on the team this year in the sense of, of what was expected of him from us, what he was capable of, but most importantly, what he thought he was capable of. And he's responded uh, daily to that. And it doesn't matter that the season's ended. We will go into our 12th individual here in a little bit today, but he's probably doubled that. Uh, the plus sum with the amount of times he's been in here uh, in the gym. I come in here Saturday afternoon, there he is. You know, I hear about the two times he's in here on Sunday, and, and we're not even doing our workouts that day. So it's, it's uh, I always said when we signed him, it would be an honor to coach him. It is, and he just continues to get better and better. And the other thing we said, when you, when you signed James Blackman, you're just not signing him, but you're, you're joining forces with a pretty impressive family. And um, there's been some impressive families in this state, and we've had a chance to be a part of it with the Zellers, while the Blackmans are the same way. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to him. Uh, well, first off, just thank everybody for coming here today. Um, after uh, talking about the situation with Coach Crean and my family, uh, I just felt like uh, the best situation for me is for to come back for next year and uh, play my sophomore year here and continue to be a student athlete at Indiana University and just keep better myself. A couple things I would add that he is on a track. He's going to be at 40% of the way to graduation at the end of the summer. And that's pretty impressive. So we don't have a definitive date on what that early graduation is yet, but it'll be an early graduation if he keeps those kind of things moving in that direction. But uh, the thing, I, the thing I like, I like best is even going through this process. And I alluded to this yesterday about our team, not to him specifically, but I will today. There has never been a time um, this off season. With the exception of getting a little rest right after the season ended, but never been a time where he has not been fully engaged uh, with his teammates uh, and making and being a part of helping his team get better. You know, with the workouts, with the conditioning, with the strength training, you know, with the going outside uh, that we do, with the endurance running, all those different things. But very importantly, like I said, too, also working so hard on his own. So it's a work ethic like that. It's a desire to improve. It's a humility. Of, of, of knowing that you have a lot of talent, but at the same time trying to get the most out of it. And I think the most important thing for him and his family is that it's not just about having an opportunity to go, which he did, and, and the feedback um, and the research, it, 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 was, it was mixed. But at the same time, when it comes to opportunity, yes, opportunity. But I think coming to Indiana, I think being a part of this, I think in his mind, not, and he can answer this even better, it's a lot more than just being able to go. It's a lot more than just being able to have an opportunity. It's very much about being able to, when that destination does come, 
that he's ready to go up there and contribute. That he's not just somebody that had a chance to go, but somebody that can go in and contribute and ultimately play this time of year. You know, not just not just during the winter months, but play this time of year because that's what the separator becomes. And uh, he's got a lot of steps to take to keep getting better for the long run and for the short run. But the great thing about it is he is he is he is he buys into that and he works very hard at it. And he gets a chance like yesterday to be around Victor and see the level of work that he puts into it two years in to the NBA. You know, he sees Noah walk back in here last night. Uh, Christian Watford will be in here today. When you see guys like that, you agree? And then Hunter and Victor. Victor went through two individuals yesterday. And he went, it went as harder, harder than, than anybody else. And, and that's, that's where our program's culture is so strong that they get to turn on the TV and watch Eric Gordon right now or they get a chance to see these guys come back. And so they, they can see, you know, if I can work like this, if I can stay on this path, I can get to the same place. Because again, it's not about just getting there. It's about going there and really being able to have a contribution, make a contribution, and, and have an impact. So, Open go ahead. Obviously, as a player, you look forward to seeing the evaluations you get. Um, it was just positive and negative things for me, um, but the greatest thing about that was I could see what I needed to get better at, and every day you look forward to being there, but right here, I, I love it at Indiana, and it's a place where I can just get better every day, and uh, for the long run, I'll be ready for it. See, I, let me ask him a question because I think there's, there's, when you go through this with players, and again, we get the feedback and, and, and the research, and you get the projection from the undergrad committee, but you get the feedback if you, if, if you get people that will give it to you, you know, from the NBA teams. What was your reaction when we started to go through some of that? You know, when we start, you'd start to hear some of the pluses and minuses. What did that make you do? Uh, it made me want to work even harder, you know. Even though, uh, like, the guys that Coach Cream talked to um, are different from the guys that have, like, the draft uh, boards and stuff like that. So it's, it's great information that you get. And um, I think that it's more, it's better when you can hear from guys like that. I'll say this. The first time we went through that, when I, when I, went, when I went bit by bit, and this, this team said this, this team said that, first place he went when we got done with it was back to the gym. You know, and and um, and what what they learn, what they learn in a hurry, is that when you can give them some real feedback, it all depends on how they're going to take it, right? I mean, the research, and the NBA is not giving feedback in the sense of making anybody feel good about themselves. They're giving real live. This is what we see info if, if you have the right relationships, and that's what we try to build up over a period of time, and then we never share their names or even give them their names, but but let them see what it is. So some people can can take that and and not buy into it. Some people can buy into it. Then the rest of them that are in a very small group walk out there and they absolutely want to start doing something about it right away. And that's what I'm proud of him on. If he keeps that attitude, he's going to play for a lot of years after Indiana. A lot of years. Talk about uh, the Uh, some things I want to focus on are like leadership qualities for next year. Uh, coming in as a sophomore, I feel like I can show the young guys a couple things that I know, just like uh, upperclassmen did for me. Um, I really want to get a lot stronger over the summer and just make a huge difference in that, even though I already did this year. And also just showing a lot of point guard traits uh, that I have and keep getting better at that. Guy's 19 and he's talking about the young guys. You are going to be 20 Saturday, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, that definitely played a huge part in it. Um, coming back uh, this year, I'm going to be playing with a great team, and we have a huge chance to do something great this year. Um, I definitely looked at that, um, and the teammates I have here, they, they push me every day. So. I wanted to be a part of that. Uh, yeah, me and Yogi talk a lot, and we talked about both of our decisions, but um, at the end of the day, he's going to make the best decision for him.
side, there maybe a little bit more balance just than you had one. Uh, definitely, there's a lot more. There'll be a lot more balance. Uh, it'll be uh, probably a different team that we are this year. Um, and I think that we will improve on weaknesses that we had last year. Um, the guys will get better this year. And uh, you're right, I will be able to show a little more point guard skills. Keys for him, I think, right now, and we've talked about this, is he's got to become even more of an initiator. An initiator doesn't mean facilitator. Okay, initiator means initiating, initiating what's there offensively, whether it's the shot, whether it's the drive, whether it's the next pass, whether it's cross-court pass, you know, refusal to pick and roll, whatever it is, and, and continuing to understand how to play off what the defense is giving him and, and be a guy that can not only get up the court in transition without the ball, but at the same time even better with the ball in transition. And I think some of the other things that, that are huge for him right now, and he's taking steps in this, is that is, these guys are smart. They continue to watch what that next level is like. And the smart ones really figure out that They've got to keep making those jumps athletically. And as good an athlete as he is, as explosive as he can be, you know, highlight tape, dunks, things of that nature, it's that explosiveness and, and the speed and quickness combined going both ways that are at another level. And I think that's one of the biggest things. And again, and not every player gets that. You know, we work the same way, but not every player understands that I've got to make jumps in everything. And even as good as even good as an athlete as Victor was. He went up seven inches on his vertical jump, you know, the time that he was here. Troy went up five in a year. I mean, it, it's, it's a continual process. And all that does, the athleticism builds a resume for the next level. But at the same time, it builds a, a confidence in their game. And I think that's one of the areas that, where James is at right now. And never looks at any part of his game like, well, that's just good enough. And I was really proud of him when we went through a a where were you when we got here, where were you at the end of the year, a little sequence we did. And, and um, we didn't agree on everything, but, but numerically, you know, where he saw himself uh, improving. And that's big, you know, that's really big, and that's, that's what I'm proud of him as. He, he never came in here with a, I gotta get there as fast as I can, I'm one and out mindset, which others have, others that he's played with, other, that, other people that he has played with that he has at times dominated. And it's all about mindset. Well, the best mindsets are the ones that have the best longevity because they keep improving constantly. And I'm proud of him for that because, because it's very, very easy to, to look at, uh, well, this guy's doing this or that guy's doing that, but you gotta be your own person. And at his age, for him to see it that way, now that's, that's pretty impressive, that's a maturity. And I think it's gonna serve him uh, a long, long time if he keeps that mindset. Uh, just things they, they know I can score the ball. Um, they know they see me as a combo guard. Um, just a lot of there were a lot of positives, but my favorite word was sniper. Yeah, he's a sniper. He's a sniper. One thought he was a sniper. I like that. Put that on a t-shirt. Yeah. What else? There were others. Um, just they see my athleticism. They just want to see it all the time. It was, I really don't remember a lot of them right now. I, really, I, re, I remember the negatives more than the positive. There you go. What was the, uh, what was the name of the guy that you were saying, okay, you're to get to this level, you need to really do this. What was the biggest thing? Uh, really, they just wanted to see me defend uh, the point guard and the shooting guard position, really, at a high level. Just stay in front of your guy? And uh, yeah, uh, off the ball and on the ball. Yeah, I think it's more than that. I, I think it's I think it's the and our whole team is in this sequence. And for our team to make a big jump, he's going to have to make a big jump. Troy's going to have to make a big jump. I mean, the young guys are going to have to be able uh, to participate. As Hunter's going to have to be able to play without fouling. You know, those type of things. But him being able to really even create more things defensively that turn into offense. And I, and I think um, as he gets as he gets. Uh, as he gets that quickness and that awareness that he's got to have, not only on the ball, but off the ball, as he continues to develop all the little things that go into being a better offensive player, they'll even make him a better defensive player. And then all of a sudden, you know, that, that's where the big jumps usually come the second year, is that understanding of poise, 
on one end and that understanding of, of what's needed defensively. You know, guys, guys sometimes are, they, 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 the offense can get looked at so close. You know, where was the jump from one year to the next? Did you lose sight of how much guys got better defensively? And that's going to be one of the big things for him as well. You know, within, and, and that'll help turn his offense into an even better place. But guys that, that, have, that we've had that have continued to grow, when we start to show the before and after tapes, it's as much about what they did defensively as as much about what or is, is what they did offensively, and um, that's where all that skill training and work and, and we know we've got to get better there, and that's one of the things we'll do it today after they play. We'll, we'll do um, we'll do our defensive work out of our conditioning, you know, where they just continue to do those things that, without a ball that lead them to be you know better in those type of situations. And they got to use their imagination a little bit, but at the same time, it's helping them develop those skills that they've got to have with their hips. And, with their feet and you know, with their head on a swivel and, and the sprints and the slides and all those different things. So. Is the feedback from GMs, coaches, scouts? Well, I think, as, and you and I have talked about this before, but I think going all the way back to Marquette days, I think it's what I try to do when it comes to a situation like this, like we talk to people throughout the year, but when it comes time to getting the feedback, we want to make sure that we're going to the decision makers. You know, so whoever one of those two or three decision makers or the ultimate decision maker is in a team. You know, I, I alluded to this yesterday, one time called one of the teams, it's one of the better teams in the NBA. They put the GM, the director of player personnel, and the director of scouting, you know, all in the same room. Because they know we're gonna keep it private, right? And and that to me is that's strong. So that so that when we sit down with them and, and it's as helpful to me and to us as it is to them, because it helps us even put more in place, it, it either it either crystallizes what we already see, or it helps us broaden the scope a little bit. And you really want both, you know, because if, if you've got a growth mindset, you want to grow as a coach too, and you want to really keep helping them get to that point. But to me, it's it's those kind of situations. It's not um, you know, we've got to, we've got to offset anything that comes out that that would be unnamed or uh, sources said or this person's projection, because those aren't necessarily, and most times not, the decision makers. You know, it's fun to read, but it doesn't have anything really to do with who the decision makers are. So, I think as long as we always continue to keep that private, and I know other coaches do the same thing, then we'll continue to have that access to find it out. That's what we try to do. Well, I think we covered it. I think he's, he's, it's just becoming better on both ends of the court, being more of an initiator, you know, being able to, to um, we're working on all those things. It's really tightening up everything, taking everything up another notch athletically, all right, taking everything up another notch technique-wise, whether it be how quick he gets up on his shot, whether it be how low he pounds his dribble, whether it be how well he drops his left and right shoulder so that he can push it out with his right or left hand. Uh, an even quicker release. Certainly a big thing right now, if I had to, to pinpoint an area that we're really trying to get him to understand is range. You know, a consistent range, and not just a consistent range, but how to get to a place on the court. Because spacing, no matter what, it, it, you know, I said this yesterday, you'd always rather have guys that can create spacing than if you had to make a choice, can they create the spacing or do they understand spacing? They can create the spacing, they're gonna be pretty good. Then you help them understand spacing. So, so he's taken a lot of steps in that. I think the other thing is going to be being even better, not only with the ball and making decisions, all right, and being able to play off the dribble and initiate, but even being better without the ball and, and, and finding all the different ways. And uh, we're going to be able to play a lot of different ways next year, a lot of different, a lot of different lineups, you know, a lot of different attack points, which we weren't as able to do this past year. We just weren't, and, and, and not, to, not to have our best chance to win. And we've got to be able to, to uh, sometimes in this league, you've got to be able to match up with them more than they've got to be able to match up with you. And you've got to be able to recognize that in the course of the game, but at the same time, not get away from your strengths. So there, there's, a new, there's numerous things. And the good thing is he's willing to work on every one of them, just like these other guys are. Anybody else? Well, do you guys just sit back down and wait on Saturday to see what they no, Yeah, I said this yesterday. Nobody's really like that. In, 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 there's um, Yogi's working extremely hard. He, he's had, I said this, yes, he's had two feet in the whole time. I mean, there, there's been no, uh, 
uh, not one day where I wondered if he was working the right way or um, you know, where his mind was at. There's none of that. And his leadership is growing. So, so whatever happens on that, he's going to make a smart decision, right? And, and I think, again, all you want to do is you want to make sure you're giving him every bit of factual information that you can give. You give him real insights. You try to take the opinions out of it, including your own. But I mean, when you're his coach, you better have some proper insights, right? So you try to give him this good insight into that, that you can give him all the proper information and just keep coaching. You know, just Victor walked in yesterday. It's no difference. Tuesday, I'm out recruiting. I said, when do you want to start working out? I said, as soon as you, he says, as soon as you get back. And here we go. You know I mean? It never really changes. Noah walks in last night. It never really changes if you're really trying to build the right family atmosphere. And, and then you know it's really a good family atmosphere when they want to come back when they don't have to. And that's what I love about these guys. And so I think if you're building every day towards getting to that day and you're making them better every day that they're with you and they have something to take with them when it comes to work ethic and when it comes to working on their own, the biggest thing these guys come back with is they're prepared to work on their own because they have practices, they have walkthroughs, they have pre-games, but they got a lot of free time. A lot of free time, and are they prepared to go into a gym and work on their own, and and work on the proper things? And um, to me, that, that that's a big thing. So you just want to keep putting that investment into them constantly, so they know what it takes for them to be successful. All the meanwhile, trying to make your team better. So there's not a lot of. I mean, it's just it'll be what it'll be. Well, because they play, and they'll, they'll play, they'll probably play pickup today, I think, but, but, oh yeah, because they play, yeah, they jump right in, absolutely. We couldn't bring uh, strangers in. I mean, we couldn't bring people that, that, that played other places and worked them out, in the sense that they didn't play. Like, we couldn't bring a, a college player from another program right now to bring him back in and work out with them. But yeah, those guys can come back all the time, absolutely. So it's here for them when they want it. They, they don't lose their they don't lose their access to, to cook just because they leave. No, I, they still I, get the twenty four. No, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Separate program for them. Oh, sometimes absolutely. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's no question. We went over that today with Victor. You know what are we going to tailor make while he's here? So, no question. A lot of times it's the same things they need. So. So do you go ahead and Victor? Oh, he's oh, not ready for that. Come on, Rick. <laughs> don't, pump, don't don't make him answer that. No, I try to go. I try to play against him as much as I can, work out with him as much as I can. What does that, what does that do for uh, you? Really, if you, if you really want to be great, uh, I just try to play against the best. So um, just learn things from him, like yesterday in his workouts, watching what he does, uh, as well as what Coach Green is talking about too. So. Um, just learning from a guy who's already there is good. What happens when you shoot against your dad? Who wins that? Me right now. Right now? When did that start? <laughs> huh? When did that start? When did I start winning? When did that, yeah, when did you start winning? Uh, Be honest, because he's going he's gonna to see this somewhere. Freshman year? Wow. Sophomore year? Senior better get working on his jumper, huh? <laughs> who wins one-on-one? -on -one? I started. Who wins when he when it becomes a post game? When he can just go right down to that post. Uh, he got it. He gets it. On that. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.